Love and Light. This is Healthy Talk Show, recording live on Friday, December 6, 2019. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. Show notes will be over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash 39. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we have Stalkerware, Tenure Controversy, and the new Apple, the Cosmic Crisp. But first... Commercial for a trendy exercise bike that is head spinning. In the TV ad, the husband gifts his thin, attractive wife a $2,200 Peloton bike for Christmas. Holy moly, they're $2,200? They're expensive. Yeah. Wow. That's impressively expensive. I missed that. All right, first ride. I'm a little nervous, but excited. Why? Wait, why is she so nervous to ride a stationary bike? Sorry. Uh, proceeds to document her use of the stationary bike with selfie videos. 6 a.m. Yay. Rising with the sun. That was totally worth it. The following Christmas, the woman watches the videos with her husband. A year ago, I didn't realize how much this would change me. Thank you. Online reaction has been swift and overwhelmingly negative. Message received. Ladies, exercise harder, be thinner for your man, and then thank him for it. <laughs> and this, the 116-pound woman's year-long fitness journey to becoming a 112-pound woman is just ridiculous. Come on. A Peloton? This comedian even shot her own parody. Okay, my first ride. I'm a little bit nervous, and rightly so, because my husband got me a f- workout bike for Christmas. That's rude. <laughs> a year ago, That's great. I didn't realize how much this would change me, babe. I want a divorce. If I'm Peloton, I'm thinking, bring on the haters, bring on the critics, bring on the comics, bring on all the parodies that have sprouted from this commercial, because if just 1% of 700,000 viewers bought a Peloton, you've already made your money back. It's incredible. Damn. Yeah. Ooh, well, in your face. It, it speaks to their audience. Very perfect home and kind of elitist a little, you know, very expensive. Yeah, like, 2200 bucks is way yeah. expensive you're not going to find that at costco yeah holy but. moly that's expensive <laughs> but isn't this the same thing isn't this always first of all isn't the argument you're not supposed to give someone a workout thing always isn't yeah. that always the rule is that well, always the interpretation but then it comes down to you can really argue in a, a lot of gifts can be bad yeah well wh- why not get a regular bike though where you can go outside get some fresh air what 2200 bucks can get you a really nice regular yeah, bike. Yeah, that's, that's 20... a, that would okay. be a much better investment, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Maybe they could even get two, you know, go on couple bonding trips together. That'd be really cute. <laughs> a little tandem. <laughs> RT America, 18,000 year old puppy found in near perfect condition. The body of a small puppy was found in nearly perfect condition because the permafrost preserved the canine's body seen right here. It was so well preserved, in fact, its nose, fur, and teeth are still intact. Scientific experts used carbon dating from rib bone to determine that the animal was frozen for 18,000 years. Today, they are still trying to figure out, though, if the animal is a dog or a wolf. That is super cool, though. (laughs) That is really great preservation. That's amazing. Yep. CBC News, meat companies lose license and huge beef recall. Yeah, they've gone from a suspension to a cancellation of these licenses due to what they're calling uh, these companies falsifying records in regards to E. coli contamination. Not just saying that there's enough that there con- some meat is contaminated, but they've been falsifying records. And the companies involved, and this is according to CFIA, is the Riding Regency Meat Packers. They're a big one, processing about 10% of Ontario's beef supply, 1,500 cattle a week, about 300 employees there. Two companies as well under St. Anne's Food which is uh, Canadian Select Meats and the Beef Boutique. They're based in Etobicoke. As of now, the companies have had their licenses canceled. They can no longer process or export, and they have uh, exported around the world. So what this means is is CFIA under Section 15 has canceled the licenses saying that they've made false or misleading statements in regards to E. coli contamination. E. coli, and this is part of a bigger recall by the CFIA. There's about 900 products involved here uh, in regards to beef and veal. Feel, and that's a big increase, Heather, over this time last year. So they're really out there doing their jobs. So they're pulling licenses for mm-hmm. meat based on falsified records over E. coli. It, okay, yeah. let's see. Is the meat going to hurt anybody, though? It, I understand, but this is where the problem with regulation comes in. That's true. It's, Makes it hard just to conduct business. Yeah. If they're falsifying records, then who else is falsifying records? And for what? And what are yeah. the uh, NBC Nightly News introducing the Cosmic Crisp, the Big Apple 
growers are banking on. Something news flying in from the orchards of Washington State, and it's called the Cosmic Crisp. Cosmic is unique in the fact that it, it's, it's firm without being hard. I think it's a, it's a nice sweet apple. It's got a unique flavor to it. Kate Evans assisted in the decades-long development of unique the Cosmic Crisp. Unique flavor. Crisp. Yeah, that's what worries me about it, yeah. is the unique flavor comments, mm. yeah. Well, they do uh, claim that it's tastier, apparently. <laughs> unique is not the... It's yeah. tastier and unique. unique. That's true, for an apple. Yeah, it's... Mm, you, don't you want an apple to taste like an apple? ...that started by simply cross-pollinating the Enterprise apple with the Blockbuster Honeycrisp. So 20 years... From that initial cross that was made in 1997 through to trees going out into grower orchards in 2017. Oh, that's why I can never be a botanist. <laughs> long imagine? term, long term goals. <laughs> okay, let's see how this experiment turned out. Yeah, I could not handle yeah. that. <laughs> Tree that started it all still sits in a nearby test orchard. We headed down the road to Mark Barrett's farm stand where they're testing consumer reaction. Oh man, I cannot keep them. The people are just coming by the droves to, they want to check it out, they want to see it, they want to taste it. And the taste oh. test? Oh, it's, it's amazing. It was really good. Local chefs are already Cosmic Crisp creating. It's from savory to sweet. It's from savory to, to sweet. Biggest... Yeah, I know, it's the... <laughs> it's everything. I know, it's everything, it's perfect. It's the best apple but, ever. But best really, apple ever. I do want to try it, so if anyone wants to send us some well, Cosmic Crisp... We talk about send us, we can go go get some. We're well, in Washington. We, we need some money. HealthyTalkShow.com oh, yeah. slash support. I don't know, how much are these apples? HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. We're in Washington State. <laughs> We'll do some mukbang with the Cosmic Crisp. It's all good, but we help us out. We need to buy them. They're probably expensive because yeah. they're flying off the shelves. But we can go get some. We can go get them off the trees. We can go covert. It's all good. <laughs> Non-tech Apple launch ever with a $10 million marketing push. To, wait, what? $10, 10 million. million? Oh, yeah. It's owned by Washington State University, the patent owner, oh, apparently. So, WSU. Man, now I really want to know how The much state of Washington selling. is heavily invested in this Apple succeeding, just FYI have already planted 12 million Cosmic Crisp trees. To have a red apple that eats as well as... 12 million Cosmic Crisp trees have always, yeah. already been planted. The project's underway. This does, that stores as well as this does, um, and that's being launched with the campaign and being planted at the numbers that it is being planted is unprecedented. It's never happened before. If it fails... It's going to yeah, suck. That would be pretty... I hope not. I really hope it's. Gonna, yeah. It look. It sounds like a really cool thing. Is they did it. You know, just by old school, cross whatever. What was it called? Crossbreeding. Crossbreeding. Cross pollinating. You got you. Yep. Thank you. CBSN study. Hair dye chemical straighteners linked to breast cancer. At Genesis Hair Art in Atlanta, the specialty is color. Owner Sharita Cherry. We have about 99% of our clients that come into our salon that wear hair color. <laughs> the study looked at the risk of breast cancer in more than 47,000 women followed for about eight years. They all had a sister with breast cancer, putting them at about double the risk of developing the disease themselves. There was a 9% increased risk for all women who use permanent dye. The risk was especially high among African-American women, up 45% compared with women who use no dye. The dye that's marketed to white women um, might be different than the dye that's marketed to black women um, just because of the texture of the hair. Alexandra White of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences is one of the authors. Maybe the application well, process is different. I just want to say that they didn't test for this, though. She's just speculating, to be oh, clear. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, because they didn't they didn't account for all those factors in the study. Aye, aye, they aye. mentioned that they could be factors, but oh, since uh, they didn't have all the products, they uh, don't have yeah, all the yeah, chemical yeah. composition of uh, all it's the It's complicated. It, it is it's extremely, extremely complicated. Uh, that'd be a really hard study to conduct. Different, or the amount of dye that's needed to be used is different, and we don't really know. Um, but it's certainly one of the more interesting findings of our work. Among all women, those who used a straightener had a 31 percent higher risk. Just across the board, that would be a serious issue that we really need to try to address. The study did not... So just stop using hair straighteners? Well, <laughs> the, the chemical, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, there they showed a, a yeah, straightener. That's she true. Was kind of misleading. Oh yeah, that's true. That's funny. Yeah, was, I yeah. thought that was kind of weird. They showed an electronic hair straightener, but they are actually talking about the chemical hair straighteners. Yeah. And oh, great catch, Marissa, by your co-host of Healthy Talk Show. <laughs> Take into account genes like BRCA, which would increase their breast cancer risk. Researchers did not track how long women had been using the hair products, and formulations may have changed since the study began. We are not able to um, confidently say that hair products, um, either permanent dye or straighteners, cause cancer in this study. We simply saw an association between use of these products and the risk of developing breast cancer. Remember, the women in this study started off with an increased risk of breast cancer because of a sister with the disease. It's unclear whether the findings apply to women at average risk. A lot yeah. of things are unclear. Yeah, and that was a pretty key point of the study, that these were people with a higher risk, so don't take their percentage of risk increase as the risk increase for everybody, basically. Cool. Yeah, and, well, the other thing I wanted to point out, so the study, they made this huge thing about ethnicity and trying to study more minorities and black people, but they only got 8%. Only 8% of the, the people in the study were African Americans. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know. So it's still mainly white women. Uh, and yeah, the different techniques for different, yeah. Yeah, but they're, they're trying to draw this huge thing about increased risk, risk specifically for black women, but then I feel like. Well, everything seems like is a risk for cancer. Well, so we should just stop doing true. everything. <laughs> And I, stop doing everything. Well, that's the thing. We've introduced so many new chemicals into mm -hmm. our lives in we such don't a, know. a short span. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't know. NBC Nightly News, FBA, FBI, sounds alarm on smart TVs. Tonight, the FBI is warning your TV can be a playground for hackers. At the low end of the risk spectrum, they can change channels, play with the volume, and show your kids inappropriate videos. Oh, no. <laughs> In a worst case scenario, they can turn on your bedroom TV's camera and microphone and silently cyber stalk you. Isn't Smart TVs uh, are I, I feel like Alexa's already. Oh, yeah. Well, it doesn't even. In, let's so. think about why does my TV have a microphone yeah. and camera in it? That's why a good do point. I need my TV listening and watching me? Or am I yeah. not supposed to be watching and listening to it? That's really mm. weird. That's a weird concept. Oh. I don't. Yeah, that, I follow technology really closely, but I didn't know that so many TVs have microphones in yeah, them. Yeah, I actually a, didn't really catch that for a second. Kind of disturbing. That, it's actually the remotes, so that the, makes sense. But that the remotes have the microphones? remotes. All these remotes what? have microphones. Yeah, what? check it out. Work with microphones often on your remote. What? Let you control the device with your voice. Here's the thing. Oh my god. Some experts say that mic is always on, always listening. The security and privacy ramifications of that are huge, and many consumers just don't realize how much data they're giving up to use those new features. A 2018 Consumer Reports investigation found millions of smart TVs had security flaws, but it's not just hackers that may be after your information. A recent study found that many devices automatically sent data to <laughs> Amazon, Facebook, and Netflix. It's funny that they mention this and they show a Roku remote on the screen because Roku is one of the biggest offenders. They spy on you as soon as you pick up the remote. They have little... They have, oh, the Roku just sends back so much data as soon as you pick up. Even if you uninstall the Netflix app, allegedly, you uninstall the Netflix app, it's still sending back data to Netflix. That is, um, it's, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Do you believe that these companies are profiting off of your data? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, they are. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's not just hackers you have to worry about. It's also the company you bought yeah. the TV from. And That's all the, the company you buy the devices from are also spying on you. So how can you trust them to protect you? Oh, you can't. Yeah. I'm not worried about hackers. I'm worried yeah. about who the, they're selling this information to. Exactly. What are they doing with it? Exactly. What patterns can I not see? Because I'm not looking at all this huge data. So Exactly. And the biggest thing on these TVs... As far as Wi-Fi, it's usually the Wi-Fi. That's going to be your biggest breaking point. You need to secure your routers, your wireless access point. If people have access to your access point, they have access to everything. They can access every yeah. device. You need to get that secured. Spend a little extra money. Get a $200 one. They're really nice. Get them for Costco, the little Nighthawks, whatever they have. Get it going. Call me up. I'll program it. It's good <laughs> stuff. That's how you protect yourself. That's the best way. And stop using these fancy TVs. Go back to an old school TV. You got to go back to CRTs. They yeah. last longer. 
They last a lot longer. They're bigger, but they last longer. They do. <sighs> These LCDs all have like end of life. Makes sense. Larger components sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> CBS This Morning, convicted rapist using dating apps, revealing screening discrepancies. They're serial rapists, and this is how they prey on their women. Janine Dunphy says she met Mark Papamichael in 2014 on the free website Plenty of Fish. And when she agreed to a date, she had no idea he was registered as a sex offender with three prior rape convictions. How would she? Yeah. How would she know that? How would she have that knowledge? Meeting somebody on Plenty Plenty of Fish, first of all, is probably one of the worst of the free ones, if not the worst. It is. It's the worst that non specific i guess that's more general general use it's the worst of the like okay cupid plenty of fish tinder plenty of fish is ooh, it's by far the worst it's nasty not a good place to be dunphy says she and papa michael learned they had mutual connections so after their first date she felt comfortable going to his house i went to his bathroom after that and he was hiding behind the door um when i got out of the bathroom and he Um, threw me across the bed, and that was the end of it. Dunphy filed a police report alleging Papa Michael raped her. He was held for two years without bail in county jail, but was later acquitted. Was that rape? Now I'm even more confused. Yeah, that's really... Do you want to listen to it again? Do you want to listen to her account of what happened? I'm not, because rape is a serious thing, but what she... uh, He... That was assault? yeah, I could go with this whole. going to his house. I went to his bathroom after that, and he was hiding behind the door um, when I got out of the bathroom, and he um, threw me across the bed, and that was the end of it. Dunphy filed a police report alleging Papa Michael raped her. He was held for two years without bail in county jail, but was later acquitted. By 2016, Papa Michael was back on Plenty of Fish, where he matched with a woman who also went on to tell police he raped her. A pending criminal case against him was dropped in 2018, after the woman died of kidney failure. When Dunphy matched with Papa Michael, Plenty of Fish was not affiliated with Match Group. Now it's one... Okay, okay, first, hold on, let's back it up, let's back it up. So I don't know, because it's... (laughs) Yeah, this is really weird. Yeah, this is really weird. So the first, according to the what she said on camera, did not sound like rape. Charges got dropped. It's accused of rape again. Person dies. Again, we don't know. We don't know anything about that story. Nobody said anything. There was none. It just said accused of rape again. Yeah. Nothing, not actually. Oh. Very confusing. Okay. Of kidney failure. When Dunphy matched with Papa Michael, Plenty of Fish was not affiliated with Match Group. Now it's one of several free dating apps owned by the company, which tens of millions of people have used. Match Group owns OkCupid. They I, look Plenty like, of Fish, apparently. <laughs> Tinder. Yeah. They own everybody. All the free Dang. ones, apparently. Yeah, Match owns them all. Hmm. Match Group has promised to screen against the sex offender registry list for specific Ow. Match.com, but has not extended oh, okay. that to the rest of its apps. Hillary oh, Flynn is with Columbia Journalism Investigations, and in a new story spearheaded by CJI, a Match Group spokesperson is quoted as saying, there are definitely registered sex offenders on our free products. A uh, duh. Yeah. A uh, duh, duh, oh. duh, you have people with five accounts on there of course you have reg- oh. what what what's the difference between meeting people in person meeting exactly people online? do you need a tag on their head that says i'm a registered yeah, sex offender really? you have to take some personal precautions nope 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 match no. needs to protect us In a statement, the company said the article is inaccurate and mischaracterizes match group safety policies The question is that we're asking, should the company be doing more? Match.com began screening its subscribers against the National Sex Offender Registry in 2011, but Match Group says that it is not able to obtain sufficient and reliable information to make meaningful background checks possible for users of its free products. Dunphy says that discrepancy needs to change. A simple background check would have saved this whole thing from happening. Okay, and go what? conduct a simple background yeah. check and tell us how simple and cheap it is and how much information you need in order yeah. to conduct one. Thankfully, you need a lot of information that I'm not going to give to a free dating yeah. site. I join free dating sites for a reason. People join it for a reason. 
<laughs> you know, people do. They don't want they don't want their personal information all out there. Look at yeah. that. It's not. No. Yeah, and the fact that Match.com even runs their users against the sex is kind of disturbing too. Yeah. And shoot, yeah, it's just just <laughs> well. And <laughs> it's true because you you want to stay anonymous to protect yourself while dating. You don't want people knowing too much who you are. Yeah. And- yeah. But you want these apps to know everything about you yeah. and track you everywhere you go mm-hmm. and then just label you and then it, what, yeah, for it, what? For what? But, you know, ladies, get get protection, get pepper spray, get yep. what you Self-defense need. training. Yeah, get a gun. <laughs> yep. I'm just saying you got to do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Democracy Now! China update. The House of Representatives has overwhelmingly voted for legislation that requires President Trump to impose sanctions against senior Chinese officials involved in the mass detention camps of Muslim Uyghurs in China's northwestern region of Xinjiang. The Chinese government responded angrily to the legislation's passage. This is the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson. And they're not happy about it. Oh. <laughs> Sneak peek. No person should underestimate the Chinese government's resolution and ability to defend our national sovereignty, national security, and developmental interests. Anyone who wants to use Hong Kong and Shenzhen issues to interfere and restrain China's development must be delusional. Uh oh. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Those are oh, that's, that's pretty aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> This passage of the Uyghur Act of 2019 comes as the New York Times reports Chinese officials in Xinjiang are collecting blood samples en masse in efforts to build a system capable of creating an image of a person's face using DNA. Oh it'll it'll God. identify sex offenders, everybody. We'll be safe. Uh-huh. It'll identify sex offenders. We'll be safe. We'll be safe. We'll be safe. Ah. The United States is also separately seeking to develop this technology, which raises vast concerns about privacy and state surveillance. Yeah, the yes. DHS is proposing that right now at that airports, is, uh, facial scans at airports. No. Oh, that's no. scary. Closing us out of this segment, Kaspersky, why you should care about stalker wear. I run a team of uh, security researchers who are mostly concerned with protecting uh, free speech, privacy, uh, and innovation online. I did several years of research on APTs, and it turned out... APTs, Advanced Persistent Threat, a prolonged and targeted cyber attack in which an intruder gains access to a network and remains undetected for a period of time. She's, she's advanced and legit, so she sometimes just got, keeps talking. Out ...that one of my fellow researchers uh, was a serial rapist. And when he was outed, there was uh, an article that was an interview with one of his victims, and the journalist asked, what took you so long to come forward? And her reply was that she was scared. Uh, because he was a hacker, she was really worried that he would hack into her devices, that uh, he had threatened to compromise. I was horrified, and I never wanted anybody to feel that way again. So I tweeted, if you were a woman who had been sexually assaulted by a hacker, that you could get in touch with me, and I would provide a forensic analysis. That is awesome. Yeah. Sex- hackers are sexually assaulting people yeah, via their is- techniques. They're using their strengths and preying on vulnerabilities. Yeah. Predatory. It got something like 10,000 retweets, and I still get contacted several times a day from people looking for help. People come to me whose children were kidnapped as part of a messy divorce. I had a woman come to me whose former partner had been spying on her through her internet-connected thermostat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, through her internet-connected thermostat. Listen to what she's saying. Someone was spied on and harassed and stalkerware somehow was working on the internet-connected thermostat. Probably the Nest thermostat, if I had to guess. There's only two big ones on the market, but Nest is probably the one she was mentioning. Do you want to say the name? Because they're the EFF, they're nonprofit. They don't want to get sued by Google. A man come to me who had been outed as gay to his extremely conservative family. This is not just a you know men spying on women. The people who are targeted by spouseware are often not. Spouseware hidden apps that carry functionality functionality for intrusion into a person's private life via their mobile devices. Very common. You can get these in the app store. It's really not good the people that security companies think about when they think about who they want to protect because they're not the people with the money. These are not governments. These are not enterprises. These are often not even people who have control over their own finances. And so there's really nobody to speak. 
I don't feel that there are any legitimate uses for technology which is designed specifically to run covertly and to fool the end user into thinking that there is nothing wrong with their device and they're not being surveilled. That's a lot of devices, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's Windows 10. <laughs> Windows 10 sends back so much advertising data. You're being surveilled by Windows 10. They're not yeah. telling you. They're not, oh. oh, well, they give you a EULA. So they, they, you have to check that little thing that you don't read in the front. So they tell yeah. you. They tell you. Don't worry. They tell you. There are a lot of things that we can do. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's really important for the AV industry to step up and start taking this threat seriously antivirus industry this is why it's kaspersky they're an antivirus company seriously and start marking spouseware and stalkerware as militia there's a certain view that spying on your spouse is somehow okay not only is it unethical and immoral but in many cases depending on how you do it it is very likely to be illegal so if you are not concerned about spouseware uh, i recommend trying to imagine a situation in which you might be a victim and I would really like to see more people in our community uh, call people out when they catch people doing it. Pretty sick stuff. Yeah. I've actually encountered, I've had people approach me where they've had that crap on their phones early on, back early Android days where boyfriends are installing crap on yeah. phones. It's, That's scary. Yeah, don't... Look, find an IT person that actually shows you what they're doing and teaches you things. Those are the good IT people. Don't hang out with the people that, oh, I can't tell you how to do it. You won't understand. You can understand. Computers are easy. They just clip together like Legos. There's nothing flipping hard to do with this shit anymore. Just yeah. got to learn some code. Go learn some Linux. Run a distro. It's not hard. It's really easy nowadays. We have great luxury. Ask a healthy talk Yeah. Hit Tech us up. Export. CBC News. Paris shuts down by nationwide general strike. Want to show you the scene in Paris live. This is what they're calling. Not actually live. This was yesterday, December 5th. The December 5th wall. Massive turnout for protests over the issue of pension reform, which we'll talk about. But look at this. This is the scene in the street um, near the uh, Gare de l'Est, one of the train stations. And you can see people there with their signs, various unions represented. It's some of the yellow vests, the gilets jaunes, which have been part of protests in France for some time. But they're taking part in the for over a year yeah <laughs> for some time for some time the old have been big. involved for some time oh, some time a week or two i'm not sure <laughs> as well but that's just one of many groups uh in a very large demonstration perhaps the largest of the presidency of emmanuel macron and perhaps one of the biggest tests of his presidency i love how they gauge their presidents by the, <laughs> the amount of protest and protest the size this is probably the biggest protest this president has had <laughs> this yeah. is probably the biggest so far the french are <laughs> not great. a good sign there democracy now french protest in france hundreds of thousands of workers are continuing their strike today in protest of french president emmanuel macron's proposed pension plan over 800,000 people poured into the streets Thursday as the strike's first day shuttered schools across the country and canceled hundreds of trains and flights. This is French pensioner, former construction worker, Michel Laurent. Today I demonstrate for the next generation because when you see that we have worked all our lives, I've worked 43 years, I have a 1,200 euros pension. I doubt that younger people will have a pension like we currently have. If they want it, they will have to work until they are 70 years old. It is untenable. That's beautiful. Isn't that my complaint about unions negotiating now? Yeah. Is they never negotiate for the coming incoming people? They always negotiate. Okay, we'll give ourselves a pretty sweet deal still, but everyone else coming in, give them the shittiest deal possible. Screw them. They're coming in. We don't care about them. That's the problem. Yeah. But these people, they're fighting for the people. What? This is beautiful. This is, <laughs> man, what the French, they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, they just need more weapons or something. I don't know what don't they know don't what have. They, they do not have a constitutional protection of arms. Yeah, where where are the guillotines? And stuff? Yeah, they need to get something. I'll get the pitchforks out <laughs> yeah. or something. I don't know. RT America teachers strikes revamp a new era of labor activism in the United States. In 2019, educators are leading in a new era of labor activism. The most recent demonstration was a teacher strike in Chicago, which was among the longest in decades. It lasted 11 days. That looks nothing like the French. Yeah. Come, coming from what the French were doing? They're just holding up some signs, drinking coffee. It's, it's just the beginning right now. Mm, okay. <laughs> I keep telling myself. I keep I keep telling myself that same thing every 10 years. 
teachers <sighs> picketed in the snow and rain, affecting more than 300,000 students. Chicago Public Schools and Chicago Teachers Union reached a tentative deal, but City Mayor Lori Lightfoot refusing to call the deal a win. I refuse to even talk about this in terms of winning or losing. Frankly, given what the hardships that our students and our families have endured, I think that's it's an offensive term. Nobody wins in a circumstance like this. We put a historic deal on the table. We've done, I think, very good uh, things for our teachers, our staff, and for our students. But I don't think about this for wins for me personally. This has been a hardship on way too many people across our city, particularly our young people. Tentative agreement. That, she seems like the kind of person that would be a real pain to negotiate with. Yeah. Because apparently she doesn't want to call it a win. I would not call it a win, not even close to a win. It's just, okay, somebody won, a, maybe. No, nobody won? Okay. Yeah. Why not? Agreement added to $1.5 billion in concessions to teachers' demands made over the last five years. Now, the strikes began in early 2018 when the West Virginia teachers and school personnel headed to Capitol Hill for a two-day strike that succeeded in killing a measure to bring charter schools and private school vouchers to the state. That strike inspired similar movements that spread to Oklahoma, where teachers across the state walked out in protests for nine days over that looks like a good one. That's one in Oklahoma, the video. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Over low pay, overcrowded classrooms, tax cuts, and that resulted lowering statewide education spending. Now, the wave spread when thousands of Kentucky Teachers Union called for a day of action over a pension reform bill. Now, even though in 2018, at Labor Department data reported about 485,200 workers involved in major work stoppages, this was the highest since 1986, but wow. 2019 persisted. Now, in January of this year, after after two weeks of protests, the Los Angeles Unified School District and the United Teachers of Los Angeles reached an agreement over differences in pay, the expansion of charter schools, class sizes, and staffing levels. Now, more than 2,000 educators in Denver reached a deal with the local school district where they snagged $23 million in pay raises. Teachers' starting salary is 47th in the nation at $33,484. This is 40% less than the average Colorado numbers. salary. Yeah, that is so low. Yeah, thirty-three thousand dollars in Colorado. Ooh. Ooh. Colorado is expensive. The expensive cost of living. Yeah. CBS this morning: U.S. education utterly flat in global assessment. Every three years, fifteen-year-olds in nearly eighty countries take an international student assessment. It tests math, reading, and science. The biggies. American teenagers scored the biggies <laughs> worse than students in countries like China, Canada, Finland, and Poland in all three of those subjects. And they ranked below average in math. We see that we have been utterly flat over the last two decades in terms of achievement for our students. And yes, as you describe, the kids who are performing really well are continuing to perform well. And the kids who are performing at the low end are actually getting lower. They're oh. losing ground. And those ones at the low end are the ones that, in theory, should be helped and held up by public education, right? They should. And, and what this report tells us is that really what we're doing isn't working. That we've poured billions of dollars into reforms in recent years. Yeah. We're not seeing it move the needle. The report also shows us what countries... <laughs> what reforms are they referring to? <laughs> yeah. There's other, there are always reforms. You can always... Yeah. What, no child left behind? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're <laughs> I talking know. about because I vague. think a lot of teachers will say that especially at the poor schools are get less and less money. Well, they're protesting. Yeah. So. <laughs> you can see, we just played clips of them protesting. <laughs> Precisely. I think that might be an issue. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're ignoring <laughs> that, though. That are having more success or doing... Um, and they're doing things like having longer school days, longer school years. Um, in some of the countries ahead of us, they pay the teachers a huge amount. Yep. Teaching is a highly respected profession. In the longer school days and longer school year. I'm against that. Yeah. I'm I have more efficient. Uh, what about shorter school days with yeah. longer school year? There you go. Something, <laughs> but just more efficient, yeah. but not, we don't need more yeah. something that doesn't work. That doesn't sound, no. But definitely pay. Yeah, pay for teachers. They're protesting. Those yeah. countries, they draw people with tremendous amounts of education into the field as a function of that. Yeah. So we can see what's happening. I can tell you with a teacher for a wife, that's a huge issue. Here's the, the thing that raised the biggest alarm for me. A fifth of American 16-year-olds, 15-year-olds, are not reaching basic reading levels. Basic reading levels. That's very scary. It is concerning. It's concerning as the workplace moves increasingly towards people... 
why is it only scary because the workplace it's scary <laughs> why yeah. i don't understand how it's not scary just it's scary okay move on it's funny because it, this is the justification yeah to be able to communicate very effectively read and comprehend very effectively um on this one there are things parents can do um we see research showing that when parents read to toddlers it actually bumps reading scores at age 15. Mm. the other thing we see is that when parents themselves read for their own pleasure when they just read on their own time, yep. it actually bumps kids' engagement in and performance in reading. That makes sense. Yeah. They're seeing what you do. You're setting the example. Then she also said, interestingly, about what American parents focus on. Because they were saying, well, what about focus? And, you know, how about parental sports? She said, well, yeah, but American parents are focusing on sports uh. and stuff outside of school, while these other parents are focusing on school. <laughs> They're focusing on the school part, not the sports, not yeah. the other stuff. And that's... Think of how invested we are into sports here in the United States. That's true. Every kid's got to play sports. Yeah. But it does seem like an issue of socioeconomics. Oh, yeah. Because she's talking about, oh, the parent needs to read to the child. Well, maybe because both parents are working two jobs or maybe it's a single Yeah, that's parent. the thing, too. They should even address is the... Yeah. You have to have dual income households now. Mm -hmm. So the parents... Yeah. It, because they're not making any money. That's because right. The teachers are making thirty three thousand. So both. Yeah. So the 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 teachers are dull job. Yeah. They're dull career. That's true. The parents are dull job, and then yeah. both. It's it's just so many dual dual dual. So much going on. Just we got. I don't know. Ready to move on? Yeah. Democracy now. Professor denied tenure at Harvard. And at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, students are calling on the university to reverse its decision to deny tenure to Lorja Garcia Pena who had been the only Latina in a tenure-track position at Harvard. On Monday, dozens of Harvard students held a sit-in at University Hall in support of Garcia Pena and to demand Harvard create a dedicated ethnic studies department. Over 3,000 students have signed a petition calling on Harvard to reverse its decision and offer Garcia Pena tenure. Whoa. Whoa. That was uh, not well explained, though. No. So what is it? Because, Do we know uh, anything about this? Well, it was interesting because at first they were talking about tenure mm -hmm. and then they were talking about creating a department. Yes. Well, so what, that's kind of weird because yeah. she's not in any department that has, she's not in a department at Harvard, apparently. They're trying to create well, a department yeah. for her to give her tenure. I thought she was supposed to be in the romance language and literature department. Maybe. But it, I don't. Yeah, they want to create a... But they want to... So this letter is funny because it's saying that we want this private university to be more public about their tenure practices. That's, this is what's coming out about it, even though it's a private university. Yeah. And they deny tenure all the time. They have a record for this. It's a track... They just what they... Yeah, it's They always Harvard. deny. It's Harvard. You know what you're signing up for when you're in Harvard. It sucks. You, she got denied tenure. She'll yeah. probably go to be able to go somewhere else and get tenure. Oh, yeah. She'll... No problem, but... Yeah, it's what it's what you sign up for in this in this. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a really and rallying a bunch of students. That just shows that to write this letter, that you, give us some give us something to hold on to. You're a professor. You're fighting for tenure. What can we look at? What what are you doing? What's going on? There's not even a department. The letter wants you to open a new department to ten. That doesn't yeah, make sense. It's it's very <laughs> strange. There's not even a department. Ah. Yeah, getting denied tenure stinks, but. You're getting an eye tenure at Harvard, though, at Harvard, does not so, stink. Yeah, so you'll be able to Because you will get anywhere. tenure pretty much anywhere else. Yeah. CBS Evening News, Bill Barr under fire for comments about policing. The Attorney General was at a ceremony honoring the work of law enforcement at the Justice Department when he said this about the communities they serve. They have to start showing more than they do the respect and support that law enforcement deserves. And if communities don't give that support and respect, they may find themselves without the police protection they need. Critics like activist DeRay McKesson called those comments a threat aimed at communities of color. So Barr was using code and language to highlight uh, black and brown communities as the communities that are, quote, critical, critical of police. Benita Gupta served in the Justice Department under President Obama. It is wholly irresponsible for the nation's chief law enforcement officer uh, to criticize people who are seeking a better, more fair system as being anti-police. I like how balanced this report was because they brought in an ex-Obama person to slam. <laughs> so it's really a really fair and balanced report. And let's listen to what William Barr said one more time so we can just hear what he said. 
they have to start showing more than they do the respect and support that law enforcement deserves. And if communities don't give that support and respect, they may find themselves without the police protection they need. Critics. Okay. So people are freaking out saying he would, it's racist or whatever. We heard that. That's fine. Other people are saying he won't even, they were not even saying it was said wrong or whatever. They won't even draw back. But why? You're never going to be happy with what he said. Yeah. What, when he's, what does he say? What he's talking about support. I look at support like tax support. You know, you got to support yeah. the taxes. You got to pay the police. That's, I, you can't, well, you can't be against the police. You, well, the police yeah. suck. I don't like the police. <laughs> the police suck. But at the same time, the, would you, if you chase away the police, they're not going to be there. Precisely. <laughs> so it's, you, you, we have to work together. Everyone has to work together. We're all part of the community. If we want police. Yeah. Of course, you know, what? But, but I take that to mean, too, you know, people in those communities should try to become pl- police themselves yes, in their communities. in their communities. That's <laughs> the one problem with police is yeah. they don't work in their communities that they serve. They never yeah. do. They just, that's true. This, and the community would come if you're a local cop working yeah. in the community. It'd be really cool. It'd be a, and then that's you, what it kind of, it doesn't, yeah. you don't, it doesn't, I, people just pull out whatever they can. They pulled out this guy who's an activist Okay, that's a good job title, activist. And then they pulled well, up an ex Obama uh, well, person. Okay. Job title, activist. So what is what is yeah, he obviously going to be he doing? He gets active about things, and he yes, so tra- and he starts. Gonna... Look at the picture that they put up of him. Yeah, <laughs> he looks like he's being active. He's gonna have obviously a <laughs> yes. one track mind when observing this. So he looks at it. Look he at... looks at it from his activist point Precisely. of view. Other people, it's just look at it from all the point of views. Do. You can listen to it yourself. Keep playing the clip yeah. if you want. Well, him, what are you saying? Just please do that for us, please. Healthy talk show. But but this has been an ongoing issue that you know we need to support our police mm-hmm. in both money. They need money to operate, but yeah. then just community support. They don't want to be hated by the no, community. No, they don't. Either. They don't want to be hated by the community. This whole it's now we can say who started it. I don't. It doesn't matter. But there's a relationship now that's really crumbling. Police yeah. used to be really integrated with the community a little bit better in a lot of areas. Yeah. But now it's just community relations for police. It's a, it's good. Yeah. And we're, we're not denying that there were some incidents and obviously there's going to be some bad yeah, cops. And with but, the internet, it, everything, it's exacerbated. Yes, but that's what's happening with this, with this report. Yeah. The media is it. just fueling that with act, division. Uh, having an activist and an Obama, ex-Obama yeah. person on. No balance in the report either. They came and just say, "Well, let's look at what he said." No, this is yeah. Let's just let's just let's just amplify this echo chamber. Yeah, instead of looking for ways to actually kind of mm-hmm. listen to what he said, which is build community support. Yeah. Well, how can we do that? Support your police yeah. and support Healthy Talk Show by going the healthytalkshow dot com slash support. Says you, your financial contribution will remain will ensure remain remain unbiased, commercial free, and all free from all that crap. HealthyTalkShow dot com slash support. You can also give us money from free corporate Amazon, Amazon Prime. It's a little complicated. It's called Twitch Prime, but if you have Amazon Prime, you can give us free money every month. We want that money. Give us that money, please. We really want that money. I don't know how else to get y'all to do it. Ask HealthyTalkShow.com. Shoot me an email. I will help you. I'll walk you through it. 509-878-3229. Give me a call. I will walk you through how to do it. HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash social. I'm not actually on those things, so I actually can't help you too much there. Love and light. Love and light.